All right, everyone, welcome to today's live chat event. I am joined by HBL World member Isabel Royball today to talk about how she travels with an entire pack of pooches. <laughs> That's right, it's not one, it's not two, it's not three, it's six little dogs. So I'm really excited to dive into this topic because I feel like, you know, it's one of those things where if you have a pet, you kind of feel like you can't go out and be as adventurous as often as you might like. So I'm excited to learn some of her tips and tricks for managing taking so many dogs with her on her adventures. So let's go ahead and get Isabel up on to the screen. Hi there. Hi, Isabel. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you doing? I am great. Um, I'm okay first of all who who do you have with you <laughs> <laughs> who don't i have with me yeah <laughs> uh, this is my number one this is pokey pokey oh it's short for poquito Aww. full name is poquito enrico tapatio enchilada Royal. that is a name like that <laughs> that is a name you should definitely get that like in a certificate for sure <laughs> fancy schmancy yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> he's 15 years old oh so cute oh look at him i love My dogs i love animals so this is great <laughs> you know who doesn't love animals they just make yeah. everything better i know i know so why don't you take a second to kind of just tell us a little bit about yourself like your story and then we're gonna dive into talking about your little zoo <laughs> My zoo yeah <laughs> Well, I am a um, stay-at-home dog mom. I um, recently, well, recently, a few years ago, retired from working in the veterinarian business as a, a receptionist slash nurse. And uh, some, that's how I accrued some of them, <laughs> not all of them. Some of them are by choice, believe it or not. Um, I do a lot of mainly road tripping, camping, real stuff. Uh, luxury Airbnb, uh, luxury staying with Airbnb. friends. Well, I, you know, regular Airbnbs, and then sometimes you step it up to luxury yeah, Airbnb. Yeah. <laughs> and nothing too super exciting. I just stay at home with the dogs, and I do my own little hobbies on the side, like roller skating, swimming, whatever. Keep it fun. Very cool. Kind of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's. You know, interesting that you were you were working um, in the vet industry before that. That kind of like seems like a natural progression to accumulating so many pets. <laughs> yeah, I've rarely heard of any of my coworkers, anybody I worked with, not just reeling in the animals. Like it's so hard to have a cat sometimes. Yeah, for sure. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about all of your dogs that you have, all your little pooch friends? All right. Well, this is the OG travel dude. He, I got him 15 years ago from the penny saver. Okay. And uh, my friend wanted to get a chihuahua. I, she just moved into an apartment and she just wanted a little friend. And I went with her. And then they only had these two little black peanuts <laughs> chihuahuas that fit <laughs> in our hands. Six weeks old. We didn't know mm. any better about anything backyard breeders. Two young dogs. Yeah, um, we learned a lot since then. But I decided, hey, I'll just take the other one. So my mom got him for my birthday, and we had this uh, whole crazy year of going to bars, movies, dates, staying over with friends. I had him in a little purse, Aww. like totally Paris Hilton style. But I always had <laughs> treats. I always had a little shot glass for water, <laughs> and. He knew how to pee when I told him. We'd go to the bathroom and he'd pee on the ground. I cleaned up and then off we go. I don't recommend this to anybody. Please don't tell the health <laughs> department that I was in restaurants and movie theaters with a dog. But that's where I really just enjoyed having this little buddy with me. And we're so in sync and it kind of started the thing. Yeah. So um, a year later, I met my husband and, well, the partying stopped. <laughs> but with the traveling started, my husband was kind of a, um, kind of, what do you call it? He didn't get to travel when he was younger. Right. He was previously married. Um, so was I. And his wife, not a traveler. 
he didn't, you know, they're young, you don't know what you want. And so he yeah. felt like he got kind of screwed out of traveling and being all rugged because he's a very rugged man. So when he met me and I was kind of a daddy's girl and he showed me camping and knives and fishing and all that stuff. Then he's like, oh, okay, now we can explore. So we're having like this whole second exploring of, you know, second life of being able to go and see the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very cool. The rest, of the, the rest of the dogs kind of fell in. Um, when I started seeing my husband, I was still living with my mom and I acquired this one. And I say acquired, but I actually went to the pound and adopted her. <laughs> I don't know why. Wait, how many I dogs do you why. have off screen that you're just going to pull on? <laughs> Didn't see that like one coming. Clown part in here. <laughs> They're going to keep coming. Awesome. And I will introduce you to them all. I'll just tell okay. you some quick things about yeah. like how I bought him. I adopted her. Um, I found this. Wait a minute. Oh. There we go. I found this one in the street. Um, oh. And... So those three were my solids. I also had an old German Shepherd, but she mainly stayed at my mom's house. So once I did move out, I took the three with me and kind of left the dog with her. Ended up, she got sad because when I would go out with my friends, I would obviously leave my dogs with her and she'd cuddle and watch I Love Lucy with the dogs on the chair. And then when I moved out, she was lonely. So what did I do? I acquired some dogs <laughs> from my work for her. <laughs> so this is Holly, who somebody threw out of a truck. Oh, man. Somebody saw them throw her out of a truck. She had a broken leg. She um, lied to my, my mom, lied to my dad and said, oh, we have to keep her over the weekend because Isabel's work is closed during Christmas. When in reality, she was going to end up keeping her. <laughs> that's great. And that's then cool. uh, another one, that's the, my other mom's other dog that she said she found by her work's mailbox, but actually that she wanted another little cuddler. So there you go. Um, unfortunately, my mom did pass away in August. Very sorry to hear that. <clears throat> Very bad, bad year. But um, I, m my dad still lives at the house, but I decided to take the little ones because um, one of them has a bad heart condition. And my dad's not really in a place to like take care of a little dog and go to the vet visits and the blood tests and all this stuff. So I'm like, I know what I'm doing. Let me just, let me just do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so made that decision. Um, so that's kind of where the full house came from. Yeah. And I do have a German shepherd too, that I got four years ago when I retired. And he's my, he's really the main travel dude because he's giant and yeah. solid. And that's kind of who I had intended to take with me because this guy kind of retired. He's kind of mm -hmm. old. So I left him with my mom. And that's kind of how I got them all. There's a cat too, but we won't go into that. <laughs> and and I, I did remember from your post that you have a uh, Venus flytrap that you sometimes talk oh, with you as well, right? That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's right. I've had this thing for like three or four years. I got it from Home Depot, wow. and I just looked up how to take care of it, and I just became so attached to it because I like would feed it and yeah. take care of the roots. They're very delicate, like orchids. You have to yeah. give them this and that, and and I didn't want to, like, when we go for, like, five or ten days, I just would take it, pop it in the Jeep with me, and there you go. <laughs> That's so great. Oh, you're such a, a caring person. You're, you must spend so much time caring for other things, you know? There's a lot of time if somebody's not pooping or throwing up or peeing or barking <laughs> or getting their foot caught in the door or yeah. fighting. Or, but... I, like I said, I have the time. If I didn't enjoy it, then I wouldn't. Yeah. Do yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for letting us get to know uh, your pack, <laughs> your pack. And, um, you know, I, I just can't see this being very easy to do, though. So, <laughs> what makes you choose to take your animals with you when you go out on little adventures instead of like finding a pet sitter? Or, you know, having a friend drop in to feed them or look after them? Well, um, like I said, starting with Pokey, having my young adventures and seeing how much fun it was when we were together and just having a buddy like that really hooked with me. So then years later, when I met my husband and we eventually started going on trips, um, I, like I said, I had had my old shepherd.
And we just uh, go camping in nearby Big Bear and just take her with us. Just kind of this little air, and it just kind of evolved from there. Like me and my husband just both really enjoyed having the dog on top of where we go. We like to go away from everybody. I have a Jeep. So where I'm going, I don't need roads. I can go up the mountain, around this corner, around. So having a dog kind of for a second alert protection, not that I expect him to fight a bear, but like just that alertness was really helpful. Well, that's interesting. I didn't really think about it in that way as having like an animal that would help protect you. Um, I was more thinking about, I was more concerned about like the animals being safe, you know, from other animals. Yes. Different that is a yeah. <laughs> that is obviously a, a hazard. Um, I did start camping majorly with the big dogs first, um, but me and Pokey were still in sync when we did end up going camping. Like he can hear me, he knows where I'm at. He'd follow me. He's watching me because yeah. we're just like that. <laughs> um, but when it came to the numbers, like you said, it can't be easy. And why would I take them all? um i it depends on the trip too if it's gonna be a really long trip like i don't know if i would take them to oregon or drive to oregon or if i would you know drive that far well i don't know i probably would <laughs> i was just thinking i started out small so i had one dog at a time and then i had two dogs and then if my mom wasn't available or something it's like well i have to take them yes yeah. No other option. I have to take him with me. Uh, I don't didn't at the time. I didn't really have friends to stay. And to be honest, I'm not gonna. I hope this isn't put down any services or anything. But I wouldn't want anybody to come in my house and take care of my dogs that I didn't know for years. Because if you really do know me, you know how I treat these dogs. And if any hair is out of place, you're gonna get it. They're just too. <laughs> precious i know exactly what they want exactly what they need what they're looking at me for yeah and very few people in my life knew that my mom knew exactly what she, no doors open at any time all the rules were followed <laughs> to the oh, t i understand so, completely <laughs> yeah right you like, should see you the guidebook for rabbit care that i've given to my pet sitters in the past <laughs> yes there's been such details i'm like i'm sorry i'm sorry but here <laughs> I feel you. So it was just easier for your peace of mind to just take them with you. It is, but to be really honest, it's it's mainly because my mom isn't here anymore. And that's why I would take all six. Mm -hmm. Unless I was going to like stay extensively somewhere, like maybe we were, we might be moving in a few years, like maybe I would go scope out that state, take them all with me, you know, that yeah. type of thing. But for fun travel, not all of them are built for that. My mom's dogs are bad dogs. They are bad dogs. <laughs> They're such mom dogs. They're so bad. All of mine just grew up the same. They all grew up with me. They fell into the pack. And then my mom's dogs were so bad when they got here. But you can totally teach an old dog new tricks. And they've yeah. learned a lot of stuff. So it's not, I'm not too worried about their you know, suffering in the travel. And they do fine in the car still. So yeah so where have you gone with the whole crew the whole crew only recently i've only gone on one trip with all six but i've gone on trips with the four yeah a lot of times yeah um montana colorado arizona utah gorgeous um local places like julian big bear of course arrowhead um wyoming beautiful wow and all about the crates and the trick treats, everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, if you want to talk about that now, we can definitely talk about what are some of the ways that you make this possible? Like, what do you need? You said treats, crates. What else? What else makes it possible to go <laughs> well, on like, these adventures to interstate different places? And safely and organized and... Mm. I mean, it's taken me a while to get my list, my actual list going, but the base things are the treats because you have to bring something happy to something that might be scary. Mm. So, I mean, just like kids get go to the dentist, maybe some ice cream, you know, supposed to, 
you know what I mean? Like it's just a, a positive thing trying yeah. to counteract a negative one. And that's also understanding their language and you know what, what their actual problem was, what they came from and all that. So I always have to have trip treats with me. And if it's, we'll usually go a couple of hours and then have a potty break and then water and treats and then a couple of hours and potty break. And so if we're going five, 10 hours, then we'll still stop every couple of hours. Yeah. We have to. Mm. <laughs> It might yeah. take us longer, but we put that into our schedule. Of course. And are they pretty good in the car? Like, you know, you have them in crates. Is that right? I have half of them in crates and half of them are, some of them are tied. And then the shepherd, because I can put down the seats in the back of my Jeep. So he's so big. It's basically a crate. He's 110 pounds. He's giant, giant head. So he's walking around the back, but there's dogs in the crates in the back. There's dogs in seat belts in the front. <laughs> and that's using these little guys here. Oh, okay. So you put them in a harness and the harness gets seat belted. It gets seat belted in, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. That's super cute. <laughs> yeah. I have it fashioned where I have three dogs up front and seat belts and safety first and Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So lots of frequent stops, um, frequent stops safety, treats, 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 yeah, water breaks. Um, if you're talking about safety, like once we get arrived somewhere, okay, yeah. my huge thing is, so when I have my husband pack the Jeep, we have the rack on top of the Jeep. Okay. So I have him pack the things I absolutely need immediately on the top. So that way when we get there, just rip it down, usually crates. Um, X pen, you know, the big metal yep. fence that you can just put into a circle. Yeah. Um, my water jug, um, my giant bag of leashes. And so I immediately leave the air on, <laughs> go scour the area for ant hills, gopher hills, snakes, um, ugh, sticky stuff that comes out of the trees. Oh, that was a yes, terrible that. pulling things out of pads. Uh, beehives, just mm. uh, not too far away you know, things like that. I'm so terrified that a snake or something and is going to come up and you have to know your local area. Is there snakes, scorpions, giant spiders, cougars, you know, they're pretty much everywhere, but to really make sure that when you go to an area, look at what's going to be looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> um, crazily enough, I, I told you I had a shepherd before we would go camping. We never the wild animal. My husband's always so upset because he wants to see an animal. He's a squirrel. He's like, oh, a squirrel. Because you're supposed to see wild <laughs> Never saw one. When she passed, uh, there was a time between when I got my next shepherd. Foxes came to our, our thing. And little desert mice would come to our camp. And then I got my shepherd, not a peep out of a single bird. It's like they just know not to come around. Hmm. It's, I don't even know how to explain that. Interesting. So I'm not... I've never been horribly concerned of where we are because we're just so safe between the two of us. We're always on the lookout. I always have my flashlight on me and okay. I've never had a problem. I'm not going to say don't be cautious, but I have never had a problem with animals coming over. There was a coyote way far away, but then he was like, Hey bro, to my shepherd. And then that was kind of it. <laughs> That's, yeah. Sounds about right. So yeah, just scouring the area, make sure before you set up those cages, of course, shade. If I'm hot, they are for sure going to be yeah. hot. Mm -hmm. So I always make sure they have shade and water, obviously and cages and they got to go pee and they don't want to pee in there. So make sure they pee. And it's a lot like when we're setting up and I'm setting up their camp, my husband's unloading and setting up our camp and it's just we have our own chores and do our things and everybody is safe as long as they can see me yeah that's the main thing <laughs> so um the small ones basically stay in the x pen like the play pen type thing for most they, of the time um, or what how do you if you're kind camping of <laughs> <laughs> yeah i wish i had a picture but um i'll i'll usually figure out some sort of uh, lines, I forget what they call a uh, run. Yes. Like a tether. Yeah. So it's a really long, I made it myself out of a uh, um, parachute cording. Okay. Because mm -hmm. it's like you can pull 500 pounds. It's going to, it's going to yeah. hold my chihuahua. <laughs> so I just made this long cord that ties to a, a, a line. And as long as, of course, everything's safe and I'm, I don't have my back turned or anything, that's when we're hanging out. They can walk around, they can sniff me on the trees. 
Uh, some of them will go in the X-Pen, some of the invalids, and just kind of rotate around. And I enjoy walking them around, and then we come back and take a nap, and then just enjoy the outdoors. Yeah. So, um, hmm. so is it mostly kind of like outdoorsy type trips that you're doing? I know I saw a picture of you glamping with the... German Shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like I said, luxury. I love my luxury too. I love being an outdoor camping girl. One yeah. of the reasons why I love your website and your whole thing is because it was being a woman, doing all this travel, being cute, being not cute, just being whatever you want to be, yeah. just traveling, getting out and seeing in your style. And that's what I like is is I love the gross, dirty bug camping, but I, of course, love luxury of the Airbnb with the jacuzzi. <laughs> so, awesome. yes, uh, a lot of a lot of it does. And I do have a, a great canvas tent, too. It's it's like a mansion. I'm very wow. lucky that I have to keep the bugs out. It keeps the rain out and it's enough for a lot of dogs. Mm. Um, but I, I do a lot of outdoor camping, but I also like to do things where we go places like wineries and shopping and things like that. And you can very easily find things like that, like on Dog Trekker or bringfido.com. Yeah. And you can find so many cute, cool, and historical places to go with your dog. You just have to do a little research and take some notes. That's fun. So those are websites that are just for um, telling you what you can do with your pet and what's pet friendly yeah. around you. Oh, that's good. It's a good resource. Yeah, it's really cool. Awesome. Um, so, um, would, have you ever flown with your dogs before or dog? <laughs> I have not. And one of the reasons is, has always been cost really. But another reason is, as previously mentioned, if one hair is out of place, <sighs> I will lose it. So uh, the options they have right now are not for me. I'm not going to put him in cargo and, uh, and I, I don't know, I guess I've never wanted to go anywhere. I guess now it's hard to pick one <laughs> because a right. couple of them are just so attached to me. It breaks my heart to think that, that I left them or I'm not there and it's kind of just that way. But really it was kind of the cost. It's kind of expensive. You have to get a health certificate. You have to get certain shots. You have to get um, uh, parasite testing, and then they have to do the rabies titer. It's just so long, so expensive. And some places, well, the place I would want to take them the most, especially this guy, because he's my OG, would be Hawaii, which my husband and I have been to a few times. And their quarantine is very effective. Yeah. And they do it for a reason, because they're all clean over there, and we haven't grossed them out yet with our, our germs. But it is very expensive and very long, and they have to stay in it like a kennel for like a week. Yeah. It's Can you this, imagine? Yeah, I think it's even worse when you come into Australia with an animal. They have to oh, like, yeah? Yeah, stay for quite a long time. Um, yeah, you don't want our dreams. But we don't have rabies <laughs> here, so it yeah. makes sense. That's what they're trying to prevent. They don't yeah, want exactly. our, I mean, so we haven't sense. had a case of rabies in the United States in over 100 years. Oh. Like, you know, dog, no. So it's not really a thing. But I think it eating bats is the yeah. COVID that's no, I don't get rabies anymore. You get COVID. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, let's not talk about that one. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about dogs. Yeah. So I would love to still take them on a, a plane as long as um, it's first class. <laughs> yeah. 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 First class. All the dogs have their own seat. You All have taken over. <laughs> oh, I have to drop it real quick. Um, if anybody has Amazon and has seen the pack. It is a new show. Oh, I've that, seen and that I don't advertised. I haven't seen it, this. though. Yes. It's so cute. It's totally, um, uh, what's it called? America, not Survivor, but America's Greatest Race? or The Greatest Race? Or Great, Amazing it's like Race. That, but it's with dogs. Amazing Race. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with dogs. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I so, didn't know exactly what it was. I just remember seeing the pack. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, it took me a while to look at it, too. But they fly in first class every country are with you kidding every seed and munchies and champagne and more everything Man, that's, <laughs> that's right. the dream okay that i guess i don't want to do it until i do it right <laughs> <laughs> they've ruined you now that's all you see is <laughs> the first class option first class. yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
So would you say, like, would you recommend taking your um, dogs on a trip, uh, outdoorsy or not outdoorsy, to any dog owner? Does it take a special type of dog or owner to make this happen? How do you feel about that? What do you recommend? I I really recommend it to everybody um, as long as you do it right. Obviously, these are probably the least dogs you would see on an adventure. <laughs> um, they're like considered one of the worst dogs to train. Oh, really? Because it takes them over two or 300 times of doing something to learn it. They're on the low end of learning. <laughs> like border collies chihuahua oh i had no um, idea oh wow uh, they uh ba- usually bark they usually hate people isn't that the stereotype you get from chihuahua oh yeah yappy yappy barky not these guys i don't know if it was me or or they're just cool but um they've never barked at leaves going by or or not stopped barking when somebody is at the door like they eventually stop barking and all that. Um, that being said, I, I he is kind of trained. I mean, the thing is, they're all kind of deaf now. <laughs> so it's hard for me now to communicate with them a lot. So that's kind of why they're mostly caged and tethered, because mm. all they would do is follow me around. But none of them really yeah. want to go anywhere. Like, So yes, I would recommend any person and any dog, any dog can go on an adventure. But you have to have the basics. You have to. You have to have them recall. You have to have a stay and or a wait. Because if there's, they're sniffing and you see them, but all of a sudden you might see a scorpion the same color as the dirt. You want to recall that dog or you want to stop or he's going off a, a cliff that you thought was fine or something. You know, it's just that reflex that you have to have not only on your trips, but practice all the time. So they just know that you're not yelling at them because you're going to go away when it happens that they just come to you. I mean, the recall is just the most important thing. Um, That being said, learn from my mistake. And when you teach your dog any of these things, always do a visual command too, because now that they're deaf, that would have been very helpful. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's probably not something you're thinking about when they're young, you know, no, yeah, it was not what I was thinking about. I was so proud of him because I taught a chihuahua how to sit, which is kind of basically all he does. But hey, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what just basic things. You don't have to have him stand on a ball or go backwards or do an agility course. Just those simple little things that you can do every day. Make him wait for his food bowl. That's such a game to them, and they're like, "Yes, food!" After like, how easy was that? You're just feeding him. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. So basic recall basic commands basic recall yeah. and stay are probably the best ones because yeah and stay all right yeah um mm-hmm. what about okay we kind of talked about the barking but like have you had issues because of i mean you said they don't bark that much right yours don't no no they're kind of happy to see people huh He's very happy to see people. I don't know if it's because of attention. It's not like he gets treats. Just admiration, maybe. <laughs> um, and the other ones are just, uh, yeah, I don't know. They have never been. Well, this one was terrified of people when I got her. Aww. She was from the pound. She would power and run from everybody. And now she'll let anybody just roll over and scratch her belly so (laughs) exposure is also a huge thing like is your dog going to be used to going up a mountain is your dog going to be used to maybe seeing a coyote or a deer i mean we've had moose walk through our our campsite like wow if my dog wasn't acclimated to that which i don't have a moose on hand but we did (laughs) used to train at a a ranch that had a bunch of horses and steer okay so and donkeys walking through our training area like they didn't care that there were dogs there at all um that stuff is so great like balloons popping go downtown take your dog around people make sure you have those treats and okay exposure 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 like if you've never seen something before you'd be oh my god what is that and that takes away all the progress you had done like they won't listen to you like if they're scared they might not recall they just have to get used to what's out there Hmm. so start off small introduced slowly probably um yeah like 
don't go far. Like your first trip isn't going to be to drive to New York or something. Just yeah, go yeah. to your, go to Vegas or go to, you know. Yeah. Is, is Vegas very pet friendly? <laughs> I think it's, it was starting to get like, just bring your pet in and pay money kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but no, don't take your dog to Vegas. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so do you have any like really memorable experiences um, to share with us? Any random stories, you know, about taking your dogs out on an adventure that we might find interesting? I do. Well, there was an incident. Um, <laughs> let's see. It was we had driven to this was just with the shepherd just by himself. OK. And this was two years ago. So he was about three and he's very well trained. He's been in in school, I call it. He's been in school since he was uh, six months old. We went to Petco and then we found our own trainer and we did a bunch of other fun stuff. So we had a really good relationship. Well, too good. German Shepherds are very attached to not only your family, but pr pretty much one person, especially if I'm home and retired. He's just all about me, all about yeah. me. And I, I didn't think about it. But when I retired, I was home with him all the time. So when I would leave, he would get very anxious. Mm. So we drove up to Montana to visit my husband's friend. Well, not to visit him. We stayed with him. We went to Montana to see Montana. Um, he has this course in Montana, huge, gorgeous area, gorgeous views. He had a big, gorgeous three-story house, a deck out back. And um, we stayed in a trailer on his property I don't, know. I don't know why maybe i don't know if it was because of the dog but oh. okay it was a very kind of a junkie trailer too but that's okay i was grateful um so we're walk walking around the property and we're going up and down the deck you know and um just enjoying the land and then it comes to dinner time and and they said oh come on in we're gonna have tacos and but they didn't really say like, well, what do I do with him? Do I leave him outside? He didn't, he was never invited into the house and I'm not just going to take him in. And mm. I didn't want to ask. And I kind of asked my husband he's like, well, I don't know. And he's not a pushover at all. I mean, he is absolutely a pushover. He wouldn't ask, <laughs> he wouldn't ask. And he just, I don't know. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I could just leave him in the trailer. He's got to be tired. He was running around all day in a different state and, He's had treats and food and he's met these people and these dogs and he's got to just pass out, right? Yeah. Totally did not pass out. Oh no. So we closed the door. I my stress level is up here because I'm like, this isn't gonna work, but I have to try because they invited us to dinner. I don't wanna be rude. So we go in, just still having my nervous tacos and trying to relax. And somebody says, Is that your dog? And I look over at the door three stories up and he had gone up the deck. I don't know. He busted out of the trailer, came up the deck and was just looking at me. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. <laughs> like, oh my God. Okay. Well, I'm done. So I went back. I was like, I know, dude. And we went back down and we played Yahtzee. Well, not me and him. My husband came and we played Yahtzee in the trailer. <laughs> but I he like had been. <laughs> <laughs> Some guy, um, one of the guys there, said oh yeah I had seen him walking around the property and so I called him oh thanks I guess so he was sniffing around the property first and then he came and found me okay so that was a little scary I'm like okay oh. learning experience here don't oh, poor leave him. thing very attached to you oh, I feel like that's gonna be the thing I mean this year with a lot of people working from home and just being home yes. more I, I, I would be afraid that you know, that sort of thing is going to happen, that um, separation anxiety when people are going off again. Yeah, very frustrating. Yeah, just think about that, people. There are support groups out there because I had to join one at one point because he got so anxious that he, well, it's not why, but he's an epileptic. Oh, okay. So when he gets so stressed out like that, he could have a seizure, and he has. Oh. Um, one time my mom dropped him off at home when we were coming home from Hawaii, we we're at the airport and she, when we landed, she brought him to my house and well, I think all the dogs and she, you know, brought them all in, set them up and she left. And when I, uh, we were taking way too long when we were taxiing. And so I was looking at my camera, my mom, my nanny cam, which of course, you know, I have, uh, 
he was just, I could see him going. He was just barking his head off. Oh, no. And then uh, shortly kind of after that, he had some cluster seizures. And it just oh. kind of it was an ugly year for seizures. He's really good now. He hasn't had a seizure since July, knock on wood. Yeah. But, um, but that's another thing, too, of why he's my priority when I travel, is not only for his awesome companionship and his help and his comedy act that he does, because he's pretty much a goofball. You see him, he looks terrifying, but he's hilarious, like a clown. It's that I just have to keep an eye on those seizures. Mm. When we go places, I have to look up neurologists nearby. Like, what's who's the nearest neurologist? Who's the nearest 24-hour vet? Who's the nearest local vet? Have yeah. all those things on paper, not in your phone at all times. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a really great tip is if you are taking your pet on an adventure with you anywhere, you should probably do your research and look up the nearest vets anyway, because that's super important yeah, if something a, happens. Yeah, a number of them, because they're not all open at the same time, same days. Right. You know. Oh, yeah. And uh, any prescriptions, I guess, you might need. Extra, extra, extra. Lots of hot dogs, because that's what he gets his pills in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, it's banana for my rabbit. Um, banana. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> that was my trick. Um, oh, cute. Yeah. So what else uh, would you recommend going into the planning stage? Like I'm going to take my dog on a trip. We're going camping or we're going to stay, you know, at an Airbnb somewhere. What do I need to prepare? Look up vets. Um, what else do you think is good? Um, well, like I said, look up the local wildlife. Um, oh, that's a good tip. Uh, things, places you can take your dog, because okay. uh, if you are staying somewhere, tent or no tent, if, you can, if you're getting delivery, if you're going to go get food, if there's a store nearby, um, or if you're going to go to a restaurant, then if you don't want to be stuck in your house or your Airbnb or your tent, for the whole trip, then make sure you look for those things. I mean, breweries are usually always dog friendly. Yeah. So thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> that um, so, oh, well, of course, after COVID, everything is going to be awesome, dog friendly. I think people will even be wanting you to come. So <laughs> look for places that maybe wouldn't ordinarily take them and ask if they do. Um, people ruin it, though, for all of us with the good dogs, with the poop, and then oh, yeah. bad dogs. And that's why I'm like, please represent the good travel dog just expose your dog to being around so many people and other dogs that's a tough one but it'll be so worth it when you don't have to worry and you can sit there and drink your beer and eat your mozzarella sticks without having to worry about him going off his leash to attack this dog because it looked at him that's the stress that i was so worried about for so long and then just working with him just took it away he's so good yep I mean, starting with a problem dog might be hard, but if you have a normal, regular dog to start with, but if you if you have a, a, a problem dog, there are still so many ways to help them out and still so many ways you can travel as long as you just do a little research. You can always look it up and see, like start from the base. What do I do? Where, how do I start? And it leads you somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So would you recommend... Um, along this same route here um like taking some of their favorite things with them when they travel like blankets for toys. sure yep yes i usually take they don't really play with toys but i try to take ones that they used to just so it has for the sure like smell. a smell yeah um yeah favorite toys i also have well i made this little um fluorescent bandana oh. for him <laughs> for the little ones so i can see them too yeah. And uh, I have a, a light up collar okay. for the German Shepherd. So it's kind a rechargeable of like, just collar. Oh, cool. That's super cool. So any sort of like reflective, bright clothing or gear would be really good. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Just, yeah. Even you know, you're in the house and I just feel like that I have, I could see them just quicker. And um, of course, tags, always have your tags. I have a collar that says, I'm on vacation because they know. It, they know that they're not from the area. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cute. Um, his tag has, of course, his name, that he's microchipped. Please microchip yep. your animals. Keep your uh, information updated, too. If you did it five, ten years ago, just look it over. 
uh, phone number and the fact that he is on medication. Okay. Um, then I got this fancy schmancy just thing from Amazon. It actually has a QR oh, code a QR on it. Code. And it has all his info on it and a little German Shepherd. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's smart. It just slid on his collar. I thought that was kind of cool. So I have like all kinds of stuff on there, even though he would never leave my site. But if something ever happened to me, I mean, obviously. Yeah, thing, obviously. That's, that's super helpful. Up. I didn't, yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, okay. uh, can we not, can we look at this for a second? Yes. Um, Wait. Oh, oh, jacket. <laughs> <laughs> little, little flannel jacket, like little, little He's little like, jacket. oh god, don't put that on. <laughs> oh, and he's got this little camel one. <laughs> so would you say? <laughs> would you say that like um, any sort of extra jog clothing is is useful when you're going outdoors, like a little rain jacket I'm or anything like that? I'm not gonna shame that? any animals with yeah. clothing, but. Um, you just have to know your breed, know your area, and know your dog. Like my dogs are, they're hot dogs, they're chihuahuas. But I'm not gonna let them just bake in the sun because they came from Mexico. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, they're, like I said, we have like the same temperature. If I'm hot, they're too hot. If I like to sit in the right. sun for a while, then they will. Um, I, I don't dress them at home, but if we're going somewhere that might be a little chilly and I'm taking them with me, then yeah. But normally they're in like some sort of little fuzzy bag like these anyway, so they don't need clothes. I know, it's so cute. But um, that being said, uh, little dogs are not the only concern. My dog's a German Shepherd and we've been to Utah in like June and it's a little rough, a little hot. I, he has shoes. Okay. So make sure you watch those pads. If it's 70 degrees outside, it could still be like 95 degrees on their paws. So. Oh yeah. Watch the paws, get them used to socks and shoes, even though it looks silly, also cute. So important. I wouldn't have been able to walk them around the Grand Canyon without wearing shoes. Okay. Yeah. That was one of the things I was yeah, wondering about, especially shoes because of the different terrain, um, maybe just coming into contact with, you know, plants or things that aren't normal for right, them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to bramble too much. They, I, I don't know if they can get poison ivy. I don't think I've ever heard of a dog getting that. But of course, mm -hmm. there's those thorns. You got to watch their muzzles. And yeah. uh, oh, I should probably mention, of course, taking your first aid kit too. Um, making sure you have tweezers, gauze, tape, and a wash are like my main things. Uh huh. Just especially, I've used the wash like so many times, just from little cuts. Like, you know, nose little scrapes from sniffing and stuff, nothing huge. Tweezers for pulling things out, and which I have anyways for my husband usually. Um, but then a lot of other things, whatever you can get your hands on, you know, uh, ointments and dog yeah. friendly first aid kit. You get, they sell them, of course, on yeah. Amazon and stuff. Right? So just get, just have it. Just put it in your dog bag and leave it there. All right. So your dogs have a little go bag, just like. We have do. a <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, with their travel bowls, collars, identifying It's not stuff. in like a rolling suitcase that they can just do it themselves, no? <laughs> no, not yet, anyways. I do want the Back shepherd bag. to pull a wagon, but not yet. <laughs> oh, so cute. Okay, great. We got a lot, a lot of good things um, to prepare. Uh, the first aid kit. I love the little collar with the QR code. That's like brilliant. Uh, reflective gear, um, researching your local vets and the local wildlife and places to take your dog. Anything else that we're missing for that? I mean, and then they have like their X pen, their crates, um, blankets, toys. Oh, snuggy blankets, like always blankets. I mean, well, mine, I guess I, because uh, they're little, they always have to have something blankety that just makes them so uh, comfortable. But the shepherd too, uh, he has a, just a travel bed that I always take. So it's like, that's his bed. That's where he goes stay. That's where I put him on place. And that's kind of his spot. Okay. So they have to have like their, their sleeping, bed. yeah, sleeping, sleeping. bags. It just <laughs> seems to bring, bring him at ease a little bit. Yeah. Their sleeping bags. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what else? I don't know. I mean, brushes because it relaxes them. Just mm. a brush just sitting around the fire, just brush them. Um, sometimes some of them don't like campfire crackling, so oh, okay. I can put them in the crate in the tent. Or if it's too cold and our bodies aren't in there yet, I'll put them in the jeep and just put a blanket over there so they're safe and they're. So are they all in the tent at night? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. So there's two in my sleeping bag. And the <laughs> rest are in crates on the ground, on pads, so it's not so cold yeah, in the bottom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pads and blankets and this and that. And then the shepherd, uh, he's got his bed in the corner. <laughs> the sleeping bag, that was the fun thing on the first time. Yeah. It's very slippery, so when I, because I turn a lot. So when I turn my sleeping bag, I pretty much just rotate, and they're just wedged in there, nice yeah. and warm. Oh, so <laughs> just like at home. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I wish I could take my rabbit on adventures, but he's just not, he's just not into it. Is he too fragile? <laughs> yeah, he gets stressed well, No, he might like it. Mm, uh, I've okay. tried. <laughs> new places oh. don't really do. Uh, he's not excited about new places and, ex you know what I mean? So it just stresses yeah. him a little bit. He's a homebody and that's okay. That's how I like it. <laughs> no, I, I recently do have a friend that is going to be more available to have dog babysitting times. So I might take advantage of that, but not still not with all of them. I'll still take probably the majority of them, probably yeah. 70%. Oh, that's <laughs> fun. You are, yeah. You must be like, I don't know Enne why. are you an Enneagram too? Are you the helper? <laughs> I don't know. I've never done it. And I don't think so. <laughs> I'm a Capricorn. Well, it's so, it's a different thing. I don't know. I, I know, I know, but I mean, it. Capricorns are very selfish, so. Oh. Mm, I don't think I would be. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. I, I really you should, should definitely do it and let me know because I'm I'm intrigued because they spend okay, a lot of time caring for others. And, oh, yeah. it's only for them. It's not for like people. people. <laughs> it's just <laughs> for the animals. It's just for the animals. It's really, and it's my animals. You know, some people say. I mean, they hate kids, but obviously they love their own. Oh, right. It's, yep. It's yours. Like I wouldn't. I don't fawn over other people's dogs. I just I appreciate them and. They're cool and we have fun and stuff, but the, the, it's my universe here. Okay. It's your that's crew. It. You protect them. That's my crew. Yeah. Yep. We'll Got, it. Each other. Got it. Got <laughs> it. Awesome. I think we've covered a lot, um, but I think we'll start to wrap up here. I have one last question. What's the best tip you can give for someone who wants to make their dogs a part of their adventures? A part of their adventures. Like well. The best tip. One tip that you really want to drive home here. See. Work on your relationship with each other. Okay. Because without that trust, you're not going to get too far. So like, yeah. like I said, starting small, going to, going to your local park and working with a long leash and seeing how they do and see how they come to you and just seeing their attitude and not scaring them. So just that that trust, if that trust wasn't there, I would just have to have them caged up all the time and we wouldn't have any fun. So what's the yeah. point of that? Okay. Yeah, that makes complete sense. I'm remembering my dog I had as a kid and I just don't think that he was the best for adventures. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I said, you yeah. can't force everybody. And if you have a dog that's genuinely scared, then don't just force him to go. I mean, that's not his thing. And you yeah. can't do that. Maybe you Me. are able to find a dog that is, and this is your home dog, and that's fine too. So that's the dog you take to the luxury Airbnbs and, you know, hang out I inside. could take them all to the luxury, <laughs> but when we get a little more hardcore, a little more off-road, uh, yeah. the oldies don't really like that. So I stick with the the, um, the crew that's experienced. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Well, it was so much fun to learn about you and all of your lovely little doggies and your tricks and Thank tips you. for this. Um, I hope everyone has found it useful. And um, is there anything so else that you want to share with us? Like, where can we find you online if we want to um, ask you some questions or get to know more about, you know, what you do for specific trips? How can someone get in contact? For sure. Um, you can find Instagram is kind of our travel travel thing because I didn't want to spam everybody's page with travel. So if you want to see it, then go here. It's uh, the world calls. The world calls? Like calls. Called with a B. Oh, called. Okay. Like I called you. Yeah. yeah the got world it. called. The world called. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's a Seinfeld reference if anybody knows that. Um, uh, there's also some links on there to my husband, my Instagram, and that's right, the dog's Instagram, oh, y'all. Oh, yes. They all have their own Instagram. <laughs> you know this. Um, so you can definitely find me there. You can ask me any questions. Brooke, I am so excited and honored to be Aww. on this 
chat. I followed you for I don't even know how long. Mm-hmm. It has to be five, maybe ten years. Pretty much ever since From I met my husband, and we've been adventuring. So, oh, wow. I was like, what website is this? Wow. Girls and travel and organizing and lists. Oh. <laughs> everything i love love yes i definitely yeah well thank you for sharing that that's awesome i'm so happy that we could be um that my site could be helpful for you and this i mean this is so interesting like thank you for being so adventurous with all the pooches like that's awesome i hope there was one tip that somebody could glean that wasn't you know repeated over and over again yeah no i think this was all good (laughs) this this is all good i got a whole list of things so Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> oh, one quick, very last thing. I forgot yeah. to mention um, parasites. When you go, before you go somewhere, make sure your dog is properly treated for fleas, ticks, yes. heartworm, wherever you're going to go. Super important. Yeah, especially the ticks, I would imagine. Ooh. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yes. Okay. That's all yeah. I swear. Take very care important. Of your dog. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for adding that in. All right. Well, I'll let you go. You can have some more snuggles with all of your Oh, it's going to be snuggle. <laughs> <laughs> Super jealous of all the dogs. All right. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Bye. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.